I... Also, come closer. Come over here. Come closer? Yeah, because it's a wide angle. Well, yeah, but I mean, how wide? Pretty wide. So you can, it can see all of this here. Okay. And then it stops. Like kind of right, right around about there. here. Okay, so, so I was in thing. the boundary. So you could, we could, you could even go over here. Yeah. We're still hanging out. Okay. So. This feels weird. I know. This is the Nashville News Podcast. This is the Nashville News Podcast. I always say a lot's going on in Nashville. Yes, you do. Every time. Every single time. Every time. <laughs> um, but it's always 100% true. It is true. It, it never ceases to amaze me. No. I For mean, example. We're here. We're in, what is this place? I don't know where we are. This is, we can see the skyline yeah, we, on the other end. Where were we? What was that place called? Uh, Southside Kitchen. Yeah, Southside yeah. Kitchen Bar and Grill. So we were at Southside Kitchen and yeah. like, hey, we need a place to go film this. Yep. Right across the street is this park with all these weird things. And like, obviously this artwork is weird, but it's really cool. And then you can't see what we'll show you behind there is a giant um, They will never believe snail. you until they it's see it. It's a giant it's a red giant snail. snail. Uh, and then there's like a park, but it's like a children's park, but kind of like, it's more artsy. I mean, it's a lovely park. Yeah, it's more you know, artsy though. We got a neighborhood right around the corner here. Yeah. It's great for them. It's an awesome area. But this right here, it seems like someone stole the- All the furniture. <laughs> someone stole the picnic table that yeah. was sitting in the middle of this. I know, I know. The audacity. The audacity. So here's one of the things that, that's happening in Nashville. What sure. else is happening? You know, I've got a list. I know you have a list. Sure. You always have a list. I thought this was interesting. We talked a lot about the, uh, we talk a lot about the party buses in Nashville. There's always something going on. The mayor just came out a couple days ago, Mayor John Cooper, and he said, party buses are not essential for the city. Okay. More or less, he's saying, we don't need you. Obviously, that caught the attention of people because it's a huge industry here in Nashville. Right, how big of an industry is it in Nashville? Like everyone sees them. They say that the bachelorette industry in Nashville is a maybe a billion dollar industry in I could, Nashville. I believe that. Yeah. I mean, on its way to being that if it's not. Okay, and so you ask yourself, how many bachelorettes have you seen on one of these party buses? It's almost, it's, it's almost, exclusively yeah. for, for bachelorettes. Totally. And so that's a pretty big chunk of that billion dollar estimate. Right. And you're saying that we don't need you. Yeah. My perspective of it is like, cool, it is this like fun service that they're just like, hey, we just like have a thing, but their thing happens to unfortunately sometimes annoy other people and then those other people who are like, well, do we need you? Do mm -hmm. we not need, like that's, that's the feeling I'm getting. We've, we've said you can only operate between these hours and in these areas, okay? Yeah. So you don't see them driving down Broadway anytime past nine o'clock on a weekend. That just, they're not there anymore because it's blocked off. Totally. So they're driving elsewhere and they have the rules as far as what you can do on them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we've made those rules. We've set those guidelines. And then for something like this to come out of the, it seemed out of place. Right. But we also know that, let's keep in mind, elections not too far away. Ah, uh, elections. Elections. Local elections. It's not too far away. And so who knows if, uh, you know, <laughs> if, yeah. Mr. If, if Mayor Cooper, Yes. Wanted to say something just to make sure that he can get support from... It's kosher. You know, from a little bit of everybody. It's kosher. Yeah, exactly. It's a hot button topic. It is. You're always turning your back to the audience. I don't turn my back to the audience. They got a good profile of me. Pro you just want that profile? Like... Uh, here, Nashville soccer, the stadium. We've done some videos on it, but it's like... Have you been? I have not been yet. It's in you haven't full gone. force, though. They're like doing stuff like i mean sold out games they're winning they're in season they're in yes. season oh, no, i'm saying it's like it's like happening like it's really happening anytime we drive by there they have the sign the light up sign that says geotis park yeah. right around the corner or whatever yeah so they have to already change the flow of traffic just you know to let people know that's over there 
and then when games happen, it's mayhem. It's a whole not, like there's been so many emails, so many emails and, and voicemails that we get with people saying, what are they going to do about the parking out there? I don't know if you can do anything right now. They didn't build the infrastructure for parking. They built it for an amazing experience where you can go and it looks great from every seat in the house. But when you leave, boy, howdy. There is going to have to be another public transportation conversation at some point, right? Like if, yeah. it, if this growth keeps happening, mm -hmm. It's I mean, gonna have to. I mean, we talk about public transportation all the time. Yeah. The question is, where's it going? Who's paying for it? If I am going to have to pay 50 to $60 every time I park mm -hmm. at some game, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if you're avid goers, and like, if that's what the city turns into, is like this paid parking premium, it's like, okay, cool, you're paying those expenses? So let me ask you this, because I'm sure Metro sends a bus out there, okay? Yeah, sure. I'm sure they do. So could it be just as simple as saying, we're gonna send more buses? Cause that counts as public transportation. Sure, I mean, I think more, like Do more... you want a light rail there from downtown? Oh, I mean, I think that would be great, personally. I think that'd be fantastic. Fantastic. But. I know, who's paying for it? I get it, I get it, I understand. <laughs> well, I also, understand. also keep in mind here, James, <laughs> This isn't a flat surface that you can just fly right by from one neighborhood to another. That'd be great. I'm just saying, all I want. So make a plea to the, I have the no folks. Plea. I have no, no plea. No, no, no. Yes, yes, you do. Yes, you do. No make plea. a plea to the folks who make this decision and tell them, I would rather put an extra $50, $60 into some public transportation, transportation infrastructure. I'd rather put that money that I'm going to spend in parking totally. toward public transportation infrastructure. Yeah. And that means that you make some sort of light rail, some sort of bus service, something to get me from place to place much simpler than me having to go get an Uber or having to go get a scooter or right. having to walk. Y'all come up with that plan. Yeah. James, will, James will pay for it. Oh. <laughs> Got you. Yes. Um, they got Wi-Fi in here, look at this. Uh, what, what does this say? Okay, here's nah, some. Don't, don't read it. No, Brianna loves Sammy. If you guys go to the, this isn't the Wings, but if this was the Wings on Broadway, or yeah. on, not, on uh, the Gulch. In the Gulch. Yeah. That's what they do. You're still stuck on that. That's what, huh? they, do. That's what they do, okay. man. You did it the one time, and now it's stuck in your mind. It's true. Tennessee Love, Our Crazy Life. I know, dude. I had no idea that you guys watch like this. Say what. It's, it's insane. What uh, what event you went to? We went, you went to the to with... Yum East event over who, in East Nashville. Who were you with? I was with Brittany Weiner, former news anchor here in Nashville. Uh, she's probably, what, three weeks out of the job? <laughs> uh, but Brittany yeah. and I, we go back, sandbox back. But no, we were at this event, and almost every place that we turned, because it was just about you know all the different food venues and different restaurants around Nashville and East Nashville particularly, we had all this food, and people kept stopping us and saying, "You guys look a lot taller on TV than you do in person." I was like, "Holy!" And then someone else said, "So uh, just so you know, we watch you guys all the time. Nashville News, right? Yeah, yeah, we watch every one of them." I was humbled, James. Humbled. Yeah. You know. Because, I mean, it's all digital. You don't well, know if people are, I mean, you know people are watching. I know like... people watch, but I don't, it, it never really clicks that people watch to the point where they recognize you. Totally. Like, in person, you know? Yeah. I don't know why I'm under the impression that my face is just not as recognizable <laughs> as other people. You know, like, <laughs> I'll walk by, you know, in the grocery store or something, and I'll see someone go, hmm. That guy, I know him from somewhere. Yeah. Um, but I think the most exciting part of it all, it was a different demographic. Yeah. A different demographic of people saying, I watch. And that, that to me said everything I needed. Like that was yeah. everything I needed from that day. To know that people of different backgrounds, different age groups, they're sitting there on, on, on TikTok too. Yeah. You know? They're watching. Whereas, it, whereas you know, you're, you're the stereotypical person watching TikTok, you might think, you know, it's there's, the... There's like, oh, next, it's next, the teen, next, who cares? You know, someone... Right. 
someone doing the dances. Yeah. You know? Are you going to do a dance one day? I'm going to get James you. practices all the time I'm gonna, in the mirror. Uh, just doing like. I walk by and I see him go. Do my little dancey dance. I've got my pen. Never in your life have you seen me Absolutely. do that. Absolutely. Put that? Okay. But yeah. you actually can dance. And I'm going to get you. I've, I've done it in the past. You ha- believe you, it or not. You have. So not, I'm going to yeah. one day do a little dancey dance. James, have I'll tell you this. Have you seen that thing? It's I, like. I'll uh, tell you this. Don't hold your breath, homie. Oh, no. It'll happen. Okay. What is this? This is in my shirt. Do you have to explain? I think you already know. It's a dryer I think shirt. they already know. <laughs> they already know. I love, was I recording? Oh, I hope I was recording. Hey, at least I wash my clothes or I just dry them. Maybe I only dry my clothes. You only dry your clothes. <laughs> dry clean only is what that is. Dry clean only. So right after the flood that happened in Waverly back yeah. in August of last year, okay? I got a call from some of the folks out there who in this one apartment complex and they said, our landlord has just told us that we need to sign this new agreement, even though we already have leases, we have to sign this new agreement that says we can't hold them responsible for any health issues that might come up from the repairs they make. You know, their homes got washed out, you know? Got it. And so now this company said, Greer Management, Briarwood Apartments, they said you have to sign this or leave. And to sign it was to say... I can't sue you later on if I feel... The renter. Yeah, the renter can't sue the company anymore if they have some health issues or whatever that comes up from the company cleaning and repairing the home. Like if there's mold in the house and then you got sick or whatever. Exactly. We're not liable. Got it. So, some of the folks signed because it's low income housing. They really didn't have any other place to go. Other folks said, I can't sign that. Yeah. So what happened? They kept paying their rent as normal. Then the rent checks started coming back. So they contacted me and said, listen, the rent's coming back. I'm not signing this agreement. I don't know what to do. Come to find out. Crazy. I talked to an attorney and the attorney says, well, chances are they're going to end up going to court. Court was just this past month or just, you know, just a few weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. In May. And I show up, this person shows up with her documents and she's ready to show the judge. Like, this is the document. This is my check that I've been trying to give for rent and they keep sending it back. Now they're going on several months where they keep sending the rent checks back. So she hasn't paid any rent. So they're trying to pay. They're trying to pay. The landlord is literally- Not accepting it. Not accepting the rent. So that they can say, oh, you haven't paid your rent, we're gonna gonna kick you out. There it is, James, there it is. So you go to court expecting to be able to explain this to the judge. Yeah. And the judge says, well, this hearing is really just about trying to figure out how much you owe them. Right, but that's not even the core issue. That's not. No. The issue is whether or not I should be evicted in the first place. Totally. But by the time we got there, the judge, I don't know how, I don't know when, she had already made up her mind. She already made up her decision on these folks being evicted. So. The so woman how, who how had did she her, make up her mind? What was that? How did she, like, what did she do to she make She just up? said, this hearing is about how much you owe them. I'm going to give you 40 days to leave the property. And you know what? As far as your evidence that you want to show, let's set that court date for August 11th. Which is past, past the, the 40 day days. when she's supposed to leave. So then, they, yeah, so it's totally backwards. You would think so. But that's exactly what happened in May. This woman okay. has been trying, that this woman, she's a mother of two, okay? That seems single, suspicious, a Single mother bit. of two, and- that Seems very weird. She now has an eviction on her record. Thankfully, she ended up finding a new place, okay? So now she doesn't have to worry about, you know, any of that, but- Right. An eviction on your record says, to an uh, apartment complex or to anyone else that you're renting from. You're not liable. You don't pay your rent. Yeah, that's what it says. You're not reliable. So this was on her record. And now they're working with the Legal Aid Society. 
put them in contact with one another. Because even the attorneys with the Legal Aid Society, when I talked to them and I explained to them what happened in court, because I was there in court, I, I heard it all. And the guy was like, that's not right. I was like, I'm not making this up. Yeah. <laughs> this is exactly how it went. He's like, we need to work with her. So they filed a last minute motion, okay, a lot for a, a hearing in June. And this okay. hearing will discuss the eviction situation. So it'll make sure that it's vacated and then they can revisit it as opposed to it just being set in stone. Got it. So that's going to happen in June. But you have to imagine, I've been trying to that get sounds, it's, The whole thing is just weird. The I've whole... been trying to get in touch with this property company, this yeah. uh, Greer Management. Who wasn't, I like how you, <laughs> like Greer I keep, I, No, I keep looking I know, for a reason seriously. because if you're out there, call your boy. Um, <laughs> I've been trying to contact them since, uh, uh, since the flood. So oh, yeah. a while. Beginning of September last year, I've been trying to contact these guys. They won't answer my calls. They won't answer my emails. They've got a representative, an Alabama state representative, Lynn Greer, who, <laughs> <laughs> who also will not return my calls or my emails. Just put that out there. So the question is, how do we hold accountable these folks who will go out of their way to ignore not only their renters, but anyone who's trying to advocate on their behalf? Totally. You know how? How? So if you oh, we're doing to... <laughs> it. We're doing yeah. it now. Well, <laughs> cool. That's what I was saying. So if you happen to, you know, have a line of contact to uh, Mr. Lynn Greer, who is retiring from uh, the Alabama State Legislature, so he's going to have some time on his hands. If you happen to be in touch with him, let him know. I'm happy to sit down and speak, you know, and, and just talk over this because I feel like somehow there might be some sort of miscommunication or miscommunication no, or they're just ignoring me miscommunication i'm certain of it or they're just ignoring or me they're, they're, they're.